So then you got Hugh Jackson, who's coming out, uh, and he has made some claims in regards to Cleveland's as far as their agenda in regards to approach to winning or lack of winning and, and just how they their approach and plan was when he was there. And, you know, as you know, Hugh Jackson had a t- terrible record there. It was like 1-31. in 31. So, man, I can see the reason why his, his record was just so god-awful. But anyway, that's just, you know, that's part of it. But the bigger part of it is that ownership were pretty much complacent with it. Until, like, another general manager, Mr. Dorsey, got there. And then um, kind of, uh, you know, forced his hand to, to get rid of Hugh Jackson, fired him. So, but Hugh Jackson was, he was getting, like, I wouldn't say kickbacks, but he was getting this extra, I think he said he got an extension that wasn't even announced through the, throughout the league. It was just kind of like internally that kept it contained. Um, I believe the NFL knows about it, though. They couldn't can, keep it from that. But, uh, you know, you know, has, I think the, 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 the general, I mean, the, the owner is Mr. Haslam. Um, and he really kind of adapted his plan of analytics and they played the numbers and as far as keeping veterans, they were good veterans, they were starters and letting them go and, you know, that, that could have really, you know, with Hugh Jackson, you know, at least gave him something to work with. But as Hugh Jackson explained, the talent was just wasn't there you know, to keep up, to be competitive. And and so based on their plan, which he said he could never understand because it wasn't really a plan that defined winning, the ultimately goal of winning uh, in his first two years. He didn't see, well, he, you know, he, it wasn't unveiled to him in that plan where winning was the primary objective. And so, you know, it was like, okay, we're going to, but we're still, you know, we're on course, uh, the, you know, for the analytics. And, and we feel that, you know, you know, cutting down the cap numbers uh, for these uh, veterans that, that, that you know, they, they got these, uh, you know, these salaries. Uh, we can throw a team out there while we pile up draft picks and, in a word, basically tanking. And that's a whole nother thing, culture, that's taken that's taken off in sports. Period. Of even fans, you know, with these fantasy leagues and um, it just the, the gambling and the betting, it's it's almost kind of tied into decision making. It's no longer decision making on the field in regards to wins and losses, or just winning. And, and the ultimate goal is getting the championship. There's other numbers and analytics that people play in regards to piling up draft picks and, you know, salary cap, you know, minimum marginal salaries that compared to players who has a, a certain talent and skill set, premium salaries. So, you know, that, that, that caters to, you know, to me, it caters to you. Just it goes against everything that you that you in the league for. To me, you're in the league to win a championship. You're in the league to bring titles and, and, and establish that resume of being a pristine franchise and, and doing the right thing and winning winning games, winning championships, going to the playoffs every year, being you know stable. But uh, you know, no wonder they have so many. Coaches that that's just, you know, not just him, but how many other coaches in Cleveland and, you know, how many coaches they've had that that this plan was implemented under? I, I would like to hear what they have to say.
where they were approached or did they have that same kind of philosophy when, you know, they were coaches, you know, so it's, it's, it's not a good couple of days for the NFL. As you know, Brian Flores, he uh, filed a lawsuit in federal court in New York as far as racism in the hiring process. Sham interviews where they already had a candidate uh, that they were comfortable with. Um, and it was just a matter of just going through the motions. Even as many as three days down the road, you, you know, you're just bringing people in, but you have no intention to actually hire them, I guess. You know, now, whether it's, it's racism or is it just the culture? Cause to me, you're indicting the whole culture of the NFL as far as the big boys in the clubhouse. You know, the owners and they have a way of doing things when they have that much power and they own teams and they got politicians uh, in their bag and, you know, they run in these circles with, uh, you know, diplomats and all kinds of things and stadium proposals and everybody is trying to, you know, it's almost like an arms race, so to speak. And so you have to, you know, have that franchise quarterback, you know, you know, draft capital but with all that you can't be you just can't be a football number you're just churning out numbers and analytics system a team you have to actually be trying to win and so I guess that's what Hugh Jackson was confused about you know I'm piling up all these losses and I'm pretty much finished as a coach when I know if I had just some talent, when we just went out here and made a different agenda as far as getting talent, compiling talent, and putting it in the system, we can be competitive. We can win some games, but we had no shot. And that's unfortunate because he had to go along with a program that uh, wasn't necessary the main uh, primary objective was winning. So they had other interests. And I would like to hear what they had to say. I mean, of course, they probably would deny this. But like, like Hugh Jackson said, lay your cards on the table. You can refute anything I'm saying just by having your proof and what I have. You know, so again, maybe he didn't, like he, he said, Maybe I, I wasn't, arguably I wasn't getting $100,000 to lose games. You know, harking back on Stephen Ross and um, Brian Flores' situation. That Flores allegedly said that um, Stephen Ross offered him 100 some thousand per loss. And their objective was to try to get the number one pick or had a player they targeted. Could have been Burrow. And so, you know. Blind Fuller, as was like, probably like, hey, man, you know, I'm still on a coach. And so when well, you're in a game, you know, a coach is going to be a coach. You're going to coach to win. As, you know, evident by his record. I mean, his record. So it's open up this Pandora's box, man. I mean, I, I, NFL, it's not a good thing, man. It's not a good thing. We all know the, uh, you know, black coaches is minute uh, opportunities that are available, at least fair ones. You know, they coaches get one year with a rookie quarterback. Um, you know, put in situations that that they're doomed to fail. Because there are other variables and dynamics that's going on in the backdrop. So, you know, perfect example, the Texas Texans situation with the coach. You know, that was a, a lose-lose situation. 
I mean, it's a miracle. He was, and that goes to show him the testament of him being a coach, having a rookie quarterback. Um, you had the backdrop of the Deshaun Watson situation hanging over the, 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 the throughout the year, and you know you don't have much to work with as a roster. So for him to do what he did and have some big wins against some competitive teams, you know, with as you can see. I mean, what was he going to do? One year, boom. All right, next man up. You know, because they want a certain, they're targeting certain people. Whoever they want to target. You know, this is just a bridge coach. I mean, if you're going to say that, you might as well keep an interim coach. You know? So. But at least he's going to get paid, you know, for the rest of his contract. I'm pretty sure. Um, Maybe you got three three year contract or something like that, but um, it just goes to show you with the NFL and the mindset of these owners, and you know they have other agendas and they have other people talking to them. Uh, you know they have you know people in their ear all the time, and Throughout the NFL circles and other leagues, everyone knows what's going on. Everyone knows um, that that there are always uh, other politics that flows through in the ethers of that, and um, you got to deal with, as a as a as a minority coach. You have some extra extraordinary. Um, <laughs> undercurrents that you have to uh, navigate and you know so someone has to bring it out and I'm glad Brian Flores uh, is bringing this out and I, I commend him for his bravery uh, the sacrifice you know everyone said well this probably is going to be the end of his um, NFL ventures uh, to further notice or whatever you know, someone is always is always the first one that has to do something. Uh, he's not the first one who's filed lawsuits. He's just going to be the first one who really just said, hey, enough is enough, and just emphatically, you know, just said, okay. You know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the shams, the games, all this uh, smoke and mirrors and all this fairy tale dust. You know, we're, we're people. We're not puppets. We're not going to just do this dance for you. Uh, you know, we, we have, you know, at least be man enough to tell us what's going on. Or we already know what's going on. But we're going to tell you. We're going to bring our story to the light. Because since you don't want to deal with it, we're going to deal with it from our uh, perspective and point of view. And, and it's, we're going to tell our story and our truth. So I can respect them for that. No question about it. I salute him, for real. You know, what I mean, he, he he's a stand-up guy. So I'm gonna get behind him and support him every step of the way because whether he win or lose, you know, it's it's about awareness. It's about what's going on. It's about bringing attention to a subject that people just want to push to the side. They just want to say, you know, give you the Heisman and. I mean, enough is enough. It's 2022, and people say, well, don't bring politics into it. But, you know, politics, I mean, can we really just ignore uh, current events and what's going on uh, in, you know, in everyday life? Like I said, it's a microcosm of America. Every business, corporation, uh, nonprofit, profit, government, administration, anything. There's always uh, hidden agendas. Um, there's always deception. There's always, uh, you know, the status quo. So let's touch on Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what's going on. There's no need to run away from it. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's really break it down. Let's 
get it out there and let's get up let's let's you know let's let's bring attention and awareness to it. And I think that's what Brian Florence is doing. And I, like I said before, I commend him on it and I stand right next to him. And uh I'm gonna hold him up just like, you know, anybody else who's who has, you know, these these things going on. You know, it's tough. You know, it's tough, but uh gotta keep pushing, gotta keep persevering. And uh, especially for people coming behind you. You gotta stand up and bring awareness to it too. All right, that's enough for me. Good night. Have a great evening.